Hey everyone, welcome to Quantum Phase Technologies. I am Coreblade and I'm developing Tales of Nowhere the video game. Let's get some music going and we can get started. Uh, let's crank that up just a little bit. There we go. <laughs> We're almost there. Okay, so uh, last week we went over uh, some Call of Cthulhu build out and I wasn't very satisfied with the city and I was taking a look at some of the information regarding that. We also started building out the, um, what is it called? I just lost my train of thought, and we're only at the beginning. So in the D&D world, we were working on the Crone of Manderwick coming in and talking to the Infiniteers. We didn't get super far in that, but we did start working on that. So let me actually pull that up, because I'm trying to remember exactly how far we got in that. Anyway, that's what we did last year. We, we started getting the Crone of Manderwick to come down the stairs and come over and chat with the Infiniteers. So we began that event last week and uh, that was after we worked on Call of Cthulhu a bit. So this week we're going to work on both of those items a little bit more and then I was thinking we'd go back and start working on some of the battles, especially Kieran's battle because all of the intros are are pretty well set, except Kieran's battle doesn't work. I, I remembered last time we tested that out, it, it just wasn't working. So I kind of want to set that battle up and make sure that that's working properly, and maybe even go back into the D&D universe again and kind of start working on some battles and finish up this uh, Crone of Manderwick event if we don't finish that up now. But the first thing I want to do is actually go over and show you what I was thinking for the Call of Cthulhu world. and. By the way, I also did purchase that extension that I was talking about, the plugin, and it's this plugin here, the Vehicle Restrict, and um, it was only one dollar, which is fantastic. This guy's plugins are amazing, and so one dollar is a good price for that. So here in the Call of Cthulhu world, we've got uh, this that I set up, and I tested it on here, and I was actually, as an example last week, I was showing you that region 2 is something that we could use to restrict it. And I actually set that as the vehicle restrict region for the boat, which right now is a covered wagon. So that actually worked. I set up region 2, it worked. We could only drive just along here, which is exactly what I want. But the thing is, with the Call of Cthulhu world and the city of Arkham, I have not really been satisfied with what I started building out here. Now this was only intended to be a start, but even then I just, I'm just i not satisfied with it. I don't want these straight, rigid lines, and I, I think that's the problem that I'm having with this. It's just that everything is just so straight and rigid. I actually looked up a, a an image of a map of Arkham from uh, the Call of Cthulhu universe, and it was a very st structured grid you know, it, it, it was it was kind of crazy. I was I was looking at that. It was just a rectangle with just the streets laid out in a perfect grid. And I was thinking that just doesn't it doesn't feel right, especially for the time period. Like it just doesn't I don't know something about it just didn't didn't really feel right to me. And and maybe that's how I should set it up, just straight grids. But the kind of the the feel that I want for Call of Cthulhu is more of I want it. I want it to be to, to feel generally normal, but always feel that something is just kind of off. I want everything to just sort of be a little bit off, just to, to give that feeling of, of um, foreboding and, and uh, I, I just if everything is is just kind of almost there, but a little bit off, I think it's going to uh, work out really well for the atmosphere. So I was actually thinking about changing the map to something like uh, not that one. Not that one, this one. So something like this uh, trading city that now this is one of the default maps, but I was thinking about setting it up something like this so that the the roads they're there, but they're they're just you know they're they're crooked. They're, they're you've got you've got bends in the road, and that might seem more natural. So I'm gonna play around with this a little bit and and see how I feel about this particular uh, setup, and I'm gonna kind of modify this map a bit. I've already started to modify it. I've changed this tile to this tile. And I kind of want to just keep going with this and see if I can fill it out in this kind of basic structure. And it's this road to the asylum, this should work just fine because that's that's just a an extension of this road up here. And then these other roads ought to extend 
right where they're supposed to. This one, I'll get rid of the dock and the water and have this extend down further. Maybe. Maybe I can, can be a city right next to the water. But anyway, I'm going to play around with this map just a little bit and I'm going to make it... Uh, I, I'm going to put it together with uh, some different tiles and some different buildings. Just see if it feels a little better to me. And this to me just feels a lot better so far than than this. And of course I hadn't filled out all of this yet, but at the same time it's still just, it still just feels too rigid. It just doesn't feel like it should be. So that's what I'm planning on doing. I'm going to switch it over to something like this and we'll see how that goes. So um, that's what we're going to do in Call of Cthulhu World and, and uh, we'll probably do some of that today. Um, the other thing that I want to take a look at is I want to make sure that this Crone of Manderwick event is running fairly well. Like, right right now, I can't remember how far we got exactly last week. I probably should have taken a look at that, but I was I was rushed just to sit down here on time, so. Um, let's see, once you have, um, oh, so we haven't gotten very far, um, Okay, cool. So we're just moving the Crone of Manderwick down and over, and then she just says, hello, and that's it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the other thing is I wanted to go back and listen to that section in the podcast to make sure that I've got a good dialogue going for the Crone of Manderwick. So I might pull that up and we can listen to that a little bit and just get something put together here. So that's what we're going to do in terms of that. And... Maybe we can go in that order. We'll hit Call of Cthulhu for a little bit, then we'll work on the event with the Crown of Manderwick, then we'll switch over to the battle system, which the the battle system itself, the underlying structure, is there, and it's fantastic. But we still need to we still need to set up a lot of things. Like we need to set up the enemies, and we need to set up the troops, and we need to set up the actual events. And and uh, for the enemies, we need to take the, the weapons and the skills and make sure that they have the enemies have what they need to actually make attacks and execute those successfully and same with the players so we'll take a look at that uh, especially regarding Kieran's battle in the intro and we'll do that as a third thing today so we'll jump over here to Call of Cthulhu again sorry I just heard a noise what is that? everything's fine so we're going to Take a look at this trading city and just kind of set it up like a little bit like this. So I, I still want I, I still want this for the university. I really like the looks of this. It's going to work. And the asylum again, that that uh, I think is going to work really well for the asylum. So those are going to still be fine, but we're just going to update the drop point and have that be just a little bit different. So what I've done is I've loaded up. Uh, just one of the default maps is just a map that's in here. You can access those by just hitting load, and then there's just a bunch of pre-built maps. And, and uh, a lot of people might think, oh, that's a cop-out, but uh, I actually I really like a lot of the maps that are in here. They're already set up, they look really good, and there are professional artists that went in and put this all together. So it's really nice to have those available as a starting point, a jump-off point for... Uh, everything that you're going to be doing and some of the stuff we're going to need to change obviously because it looks a bit too modern like this building down here you know it's got these signs over here those didn't exist in the 20s obviously and I've also removed all of the lines this this trading city actually I'll show you what it looked like to begin with I know I'm taking a bit of time doing this sort of thing but um, this is what the trading city looked like originally and they didn't actually have white markings on roads back in the 20s in in the USA they only started doing that over in England at, at in about 1918 I think it was um, so anyway the the road markings I had to remove all of those because that didn't match the time and again I'm gonna remove some of this other stuff like these these billboards and things that uh, electronic signs at least did not exist in the 1920s they didn't have those things and I'm going to remove that little bus. So I, I'm just going to get started doing this sort of thing. So I'm just going to kind of remove everything. Um, this is not working. Well. Oh, it's the field back. Okay. So I'm just going to go through. I'm going to start updating all of this. Now, my 
biggest goal right now is just to kind of take everything away, just sort of get a, a base shape of the city. Um, not take everything away, but like take all of the stuff away. We're going to add that stuff later, and we might look at the other one for reference, but I'm just going to kind of clear out a bunch of the stuff because I just don't want all of that there. Like this uh, stoplight that they didn't have those in the 20s. They were just learning, or just just uh, getting accustomed to cars, not not just barely learning about it, but um, they they were still getting accustomed to cars and didn't have a, a lot of traffic rules and stuff. I looked these things up. I did a little research because I was very curious about um, actually if there were uh, road markings back then. And it turns out there weren't. But they started getting road markings in some of the cities because there were a lot of issues. There were a lot of uh, deaths because people were just going too fast and the other people, pedestrians, were not used to vehicles driving around the roads in the beginning. So it, it was it was a big issue back then. I read up about it and I was just like, holy cow, that's, that's nuts. But that is... Is okay, that's the the way it was. Now, you know, I'm, I'm actually curious to know how things have changed um, between then and now because we, we still get a lot of accidents, injuries, death because of uh, traffic. So, I mean, it hasn't it hasn't all gone away for sure. There's still a lot of a lot of issues. Oh, well, that was kind of interesting. So that little uh, part went away. Goodness, sorry. Um, this little part here, I, I actually want that there. Nope, not like that though. I want it to, um, to be there, so I'm going to copy this and put it right on top of that. Okay, so that'll make it more of a distinct building. Anyway, I don't, I don't know if I'm even going to leave that building there, but that's beside the point. Okay, let's just start uh, clearing out the rest of this. I think I'll go ahead and leave the trees for now. Uh, just make sure that that's okay. Just want to make sure that all of the sidewalk is has been replaced, and it looks like I've gotten it all fairly well replaced. Okay, we're good. Now the other thing is these these walls. I'm not sure if they would have walls like this in Arkham City, but maybe. Alright, uh, the other thing we need to do is take away the technology, the blatant technology. So things like this, got to get rid of these, and that, because that's just very uh, blatant technology signs. This sort of thing um, probably wasn't around, something like that might have been, let's just get rid of those, that's fine. Um, that looks a bit out of place, we'll get rid of that one. So this is a, a supermarket, but it's not going to be quite like that probably back then. Um, there's a bar, that's kind of cool. I wonder, did they have neon signs back in the 20s? I'm learning all sorts of things here, I'm, I'm going to Google this. So, um, first of all, let's just see, okay. Uh, I'm going to go here, sorry, I'm just getting this ready. There, okay. So this this was uh, one of my searches for um, the 1920s city, just to get a feel of what the city kind of looked like. Uh, it doesn't look like they have a lot of signage. Now that's New York, but this is Arkham, and I'm not sure that they would have necessarily had that kind of technology. But the thing is, we can't really tell. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's it. Um, when were neon signs introduced December 1910 oh so the signage industry neon signs electric signs um, their most common use for neon lighting was first demonstrated in a moderate form in December 1910 so 10 years later I might have had neon signs at uh, in uh, some places in the 1920s So yeah, I guess uh, neon signs might be. Yeah, let's go to neon sign Wikipedia. <laughs> I know this is a lot of uh, um, 
a lot of interesting, or, or this is this is a lot of like like side tracking, but I want to make sure that we're some somewhat accurate at least. See, while they are used worldwide, neon signs were popular in the United States from about 1920 to 1960. So if they were popular during those times, then it, it's probably a safe bet to say that Arkham may have had a neon sign or two, you know, little ones. So I, I think it's not out of the realm of possibility. So okay, great. Let's head back over. Nope, we don't need that intro again. <laughs> okay, so just head back over to the game and. Um, so that neon sign, actually, we might want to keep it there. Oh, that's an item shop. Oh, that's interesting. It almost makes more sense if it is a bar. Let's see if we've got some kind of a bar thing. I don't know. It's so hard to see these little tiny things on it. Oh, there it is up there. Oh, yeah, something like that instead of what's there. So I'm actually going to get rid of that. I'm going to drop this one in. Boom, there, now we have a bar. Cool. And, uh, oh, there's some armor right there. <laughs> okay, nice. Um, you know what, I'm, I'm actually going to go back and I'm just going to take a look, a quick look at the cities, 1920s city. Um, really, most of the images are of New York, so it's kind of hard to get a good idea of what other places might have been like. I was just uh, thinking about these walls. So we've got these these giant concrete walls down here. I just don't know if that would have been in Arkham in the 1920s. But maybe. Maybe they had big giant concrete walls in certain places. At least they certainly could have. You know, I'm just not seeing anything. I'm just scrolling down through all of these pictures and all I'm seeing are buildings, not big concrete walls. But near the docks, maybe. Okay, anyway, that's taking too much time with that. Let's just uh, try to devolve this. Now, I don't want signage all over the place, like neon signs everywhere. I just want, you know, a couple things. There might still be a few other types of signs around. Let's see if we have something else. Um, yeah, see, really all we have is high technology here. But maybe we could have something like that be a sign somewhere like right there yeah I don't know I don't know we'll, we'll think about that later oh we've got one we've got a sign right there it's a little construction site and see I don't know I don't know how uh, how that would look in in a 20 setting okay anyway uh, this car definitely not and a bench like this, probably not. They probably still have like wooden benches there. Um, so these are going to be gone. So are the lines, because they're not going to have lines separating things. In fact, they're probably not even going to have a parking lot necessarily over here. So um, we could probably fill that space with something else. And the university we might want to drop down here. So that's what I was thinking, just kind of getting rid of the water, or at least part of it. Maybe we can have it kind of bend over uh, this way and fill this area with the university. Possibly. Let's just see what that would look like. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this whole thing and I'm just gonna drop it in and see just kind of what it looks like down here. So that road I still want to go on that way, go over that way. University would work just fine there. There, there are paths to this other building up here. Um, it's kind of cool. That might that might work out. Although I would want to put it a little closer to that area up there. But maybe not that close. So okay, I'm gonna undo that. Drop it down here. All right. I I actually like that. I think I think that's a good placing for the university. Then you can drive around here. You can drive down here and get a path to the university, you can drive over here and get out of town, you can drive over there and get to where the, what's it called, the sewer entrance is, the, the big giant sewer entrance, I want that to be kind of over to the left. Okay, so I'm, I'm feeling good about this for the city so far. And there, there's still a lot that we need to do to 
get it working. Oh wait, we do have a bar. It's down here. Oh, I like that bar better. This is kind of nice. This, this is a good looking bar. It's better than this old, uh, this, this little place here. Hole in the wall, maybe that could be a restaurant or something. A casino, there you go. There's a casino. Tiny little thing right out here. Yeah, that doesn't work at all. So, um, something like a supermarket. They wouldn't have a, a fancy sign for that either. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. Um, now I do, I do kind of want to follow the the idea that I had. Where did I draw that? Oh, I don't have the notebook that I drew that particular thing in. I don't think. We have the chronometer, the friction. Sorry, I'm just looking at my notes, and I don't think I have the drawing that I made of this place. Nope, I do not. Um, but I did I did write myself a note that says, Get Crone of Manderwick art in-game. So, uh, that's definitely something that I want to do here in just a second. But, uh, if I'm remembering right, I think I want an item shop um, down here somewhere. Just, just like a supermarket and a restaurant I wanted. So we could make this into a restaurant. We definitely want a an apartment building. So this could be our apartment building. That looks a bit too modern for this setting, but this inn actually looks really good. This this looks like a good apartment building, but it might make it nice. Y you know what? The inn maybe should be smaller. I mean, this is just Arkham. It should have just like a little inn. Maybe this this one should be a little inn, and this could be the apartment complex. So let's go ahead and get rid of that one there. Maybe this can just be another apartment complex or something. Maybe we'll shorten up these buildings. I'll think on that a little bit. But this can be a shop. That can be the inn. And I'm actually just going to drop these here. I don't want neon all over the place, but I'm going to drop these here just to kind of get an idea. Now, that's not necessarily even neon. That, that kind of looks like a good inn sign, just the way it is. Now, wait, what inn sign was up there? Oh, it was. It was just that one. Great. I can't redo things. I can only undo things. Yeah, RPG Maker. It's fantastic, but it does have some drawbacks. So you can't like you can't undo and then redo. You just have to actually go back through and do what you did before. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, drop those signs there, and this supermarket sign I'll get rid of, but the inn sign will probably be fine. I'm gonna change this building though, and make it a little bit different, so that it's just a a nice cozy inn. And here's the university. So this, um, I want the road to go down. I, I like these these stairs though. Actually, I think I'm gonna move this over. Yeah, just just the stairs. I'm gonna move over here, and I'm gonna put that there. No, okay. So I'm just trying to figure out exactly how I want to work this. Okay, so I want that to be kind of over there. Now how are you going to get to the end? Never mind. Um, but yeah, I, I just want that, I, I want there to be sort of a, a path down here. Oh, not quite that far over. So I'm just going to put that back up there. Great. And uh, maybe I'll just do that there and that there. Okay, cool. And maybe I'll drop this down here like that, so it's not bothering the people at the university. I don't know. This it, these are just ideas. I'm just kind of playing around with this right now. Yeah, let's just drop this down so it's not um, bothering them over there. And I'm going to extend this road. Let's grab that tool, and this road goes all the way down like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna want to change a lot of this. Maybe I'll just put like more more buildings and stuff in here instead of having it be a dock and, and an area like that. Yeah, we'll see. Alright, for now. For now, let's just take care of this this guy. Okay, so I'm gonna run the uh, so I'm going to have to re redo that part, and that's okay. So let's redo the top of that building. Grab that, drop it in there. 
Grab this, drop it in over there. All right, cool. That's fantastic. Um, actually, maybe I was a little premature. Nope, nope, that's okay. I did that one part, that's fine. Um, okay, so I'm just building out the area around it. This is gonna have a nice little walking path next to it, and it's still gonna have its, its little uh, things here. Um, this can go down like that and we want the road to go next to it. Something like this. Okay, that's fine. Um, that one, how about we do two wide? Is that gonna be, is that gonna be okay? Would they have sidewalks like this, this big? You know what, maybe we can even have the road come down. Is that three wide? Yeah. Two, three, that's that's three, right? Maybe I can have the road come down to this point. This road can come up to meet it, and that's actually where it goes off. Now that I'm gonna take that. We're going to go there. Nope, something like this. Three, one, two, three, four. So that's a bit too much. There, something like that. Okay. And let's fill that in. Maybe something like that. Cool. I think that'll work out okay. Um, let's fill this back in. Yeah, <laughs> not with that tool. Um, let's grab the pencil, there we go. And we'll grab this, fill that one in. Okay, so there's the university. Well, it cuts off way too sharply there. I don't like that. Um, I'm gonna bring this up a bit. I'm actually gonna bring the grass up here. That See, it was, it was just cutting off way too sharp. It looked like that was just sort of floating. Still kind of looks like it's floating. Is that really what it was? Where did we get that one from anyway? I want to see it kind of in its, uh, in the, the place that it started at. You know, the the map that, that uh, had that in it. I want to see kind of how it's done in that map. So I'm gonna go ahead and load. I can't remember which one it is. Shop district maybe? Nope. Downtown. Nope. Factory, no. Power plant, no. Um, business district? No. Trading city. No, that's the one that we're working on. Big city, small town. <laughs> Lava a cave? No, it's not in a cave. Uh, all the transference. Okay, so I'm actually not sure which map I got that one from. I can't remember. Has to have been one of these here. Suburbs. Maybe it was that. Yeah, suburbs. Just want to see it in its natural habitat just to see what it looked like. Yeah, it just, my my eyes kind of go weird when I look at that part of it. It's, it's just like it's floating up above everything. That's kind of weird. Okay, may, maybe I'm just, maybe it's fine. Delete suburbs, yes. Let's go back to Call of Cthulhu. What was that map? Oh, it starts with that number, that's right. So this is the, the beginnings of that space station. I have some ideas for stars without number, but I don't have those ideas fleshed out yet at all. So we're not going to address that yet, but if you want, I can show you, um, maybe later I'll show you what I have done before in, um, in, in terms of a space sim, not, not even a space sim, it's not even close to a space sim, but in terms of a space game in RPG Maker MV. So I'll show you kind of some of the things that I've done already. Let's get rid of that and that. Okay, so I'm gonna to need to replace those. Just grab that and replace this part of it and then I will replace the tree tops. We'll be fine. I think, yeah, it's this little sort of ragged tree. So there's this kind of smooth tree uh, in a sort of a planter and then kind of a ragged tree. So got more of a ragged tree over here okay now this seems a little too cramped 
earlier I was thinking, oh, there's there's too much space, but now it's it's just feeling a bit cramped to me. So I wonder if we might want to bring it down like this and have something like that. There we go. That that feels a bit better to me. Ah, and I like that too. Just just kind of a little there, that feels better. Now, now we just kind of have a space to walk over there, maybe put a, a hidden item over there or something. Uh, it just feels a little bit better. Okay. Just want to give it a little more space. There we go. I'll add a, a couple more things so that it doesn't look too barren in that space I've just created. If I can find stuff, yeah, just like little. There we go. Just a little something. And maybe some little pebbles over here. Cool. Okay. I think that'll work. So we've got... Yeah, we've got the entrance right there. We've got this little path leading up to it. And... Okay, so I think we're making some good progress with the drop point for Call of Cthulhu. I think that'll be nice. Um, this one... Might want to extend this just a little bit. So if we want to have this much space, we might want to put more buildings and shops and stuff in here. Um, so in fact, that doesn't look right. I, I know I wanted a, a little more variety. I wanted the streets to, to curve and to go kind of different places, but I don't want it to be too crazy. I do want some some uh, semblance of order in here as well. Like I said, I, I want it to to seem I want it to seem fairly normal, but off just a little bit. And that's the other thing, I have I was thinking about music to add here, and, and I found a piece of music that I think might work. I went through the, the John Byrne uh, collection and for the Call of Cthulhu universe, and there are a lot of really good pieces there, but for the background music, just the overall background music, uh, n none of it really fit what I was going for. What? Because uh, again, I kind of want something that just feels like, hey, this is a town, like maybe almost upbeat, but something is just off, so I, I want it to still feel kind of mysterious and foreboding, just so that the player gets the impression when they're here that, you know, I'm I, I'm in a place and I'm playing a game, that's, that's fine, but something just feels a little bit off. I, I always want that, that sort of... because that's what the Call of Cthulhu universe is. It's just always got kind of that, that feeling that not everything is right. So, you know, something's just not quite right here. But I don't want it to, to be a very, you know, I, I don't want it to be too kind of in your face, this is a horror thing, not not for the overall music. There are going to be some parts where I'm definitely going to introduce some of that music in there and it's going to um, add to the atmosphere of those parts. But just for the overall feeling, I just want it to just kind of be an overall feeling of foreboding, but not not outrageous or anything. Yeah, I'm going to add some street lamps because... Uh, we need some street lamps around. Otherwise, how are people going to see? I don't know where to put them. Maybe just um, in a few corners and whatnot. I don't know. Both corners here? This this little intersection does look a little weird. Maybe it looks off in, in the wrong way. <laughs> but maybe it's okay. Well, we'll try it out. So I'll, I'll go in here and I'll kind of try this out just a little bit. Maybe I'll... Um, go ahead and add this as the drop point just so that we can kind of see what's happening and how it works. So I'm just going to add a couple right there. There we go. I don't want to overdo it. That actually feels like too much right now. Let's take this guy away. Does that feel better? Still feels like too much. So I think I'll take this one away and I'll take this one away. And maybe I'll add one up here just a little bit. See, I want there to be street lights, but I don't want them to be overwhelming. Maybe I'll zoom in, they won't be too overwhelming. Nah, that looks about right. But this guy, I'm gonna move over so that it's not quite over so far. Just like that, there we go. Just wanna kinda stagger them just a little bit. Uh, nope. Oh, I have one right down here. That's nah, okay. I'll just leave that one there. But I'll also add, not right in the middle of the street, that would be kind of funny. That's not going to work, but one like this right here. There we go. So we have a, a place to go. Okay, great. So I think we're ready now to 
go ahead and add the drop point here. So I'm going to go to this Call of Cthulhu. I'm going to grab that one. I'm just going to copy this event and I'm going to drop it in um, right here, actually. There we go. And that's going to take us back to the cafe. So now I need to go over to the lab and I need to set this up to take the player to that particular map instead of the other one. So we've got right here, um, yes, Call of Cthulhu. Oh, so it's in the trigger effect. Ah, well, that was smart because then I just need to update it once and then both of those events are going to work just fine. That is good. So right here, down here, I think this is where we're going to transfer. That's it. That's it exactly. So it transfers right there. So instead of that, we're actually going to move it right over here. And that's all we need to do. Now that ought to work. But I want to go over here and I want to drop in the the boat, which is the uh, covered wagon right now. So we're going to do a quick event. Nope, set starting position boat. So now we've got the covered wagon in here. Now I'm going to make it so that it can travel along all of these streets. So here we've got... Um, so this is it's just kind of like you, you take the drawing tool and you just basically draw your your regions. And, and that's what this is for. And you can have a lot of regions. So I can do a lot of different stuff. But I set number two to be the boat restricted region. You know what? I just had a thought. I don't want to mess up what I've done in um, Thane's World. Because we do have in cyberspace, we've got regions. And I want to make sure, and, and I've done stuff, I've done region restrictions. So this is the, the player walking region restrictions. And right now we're going to do the restrictions for the vehicles. It, it doesn't look like we have any number twos in here. So it looks like all of our region restrictions here are are uh, above the number two so so you can actually see the region restrictions working so these the 25 that's probably a player restricted it is yeah because the graphic that I have on there would allow the player to walk into the wall and we don't want that so I have 25 restricting the region because of that graphic uh, and so the player, that's a player restricted region. These 16s are not a player restricted region. You can walk over that, but these events cannot pass 16. So that's what actually keeps these events inside because I have some events over here, which are right here, which just kind of walk around. They actually follow you. So if you, if you come over here, they're gonna follow you. They're gonna come down here, but they're not gonna go out of their rooms. So that, that kind of works. Um, and number seven, that's that's a specifically passable region. So 25 you, player can't pass, seven you can't pass. Anyway, that's all beside the point. I just uh, wanted to talk about that for some reason, I guess. Um, so let's go back to Call of Cthulhu and let's drop Cafe Nowhere, D&D &D World. Ah, here we are, back to the trading city. So. Now that we have the vehicle region restrictions, uh, this is actually, instead of a restriction, this is going to be a uh, basically granting access to the vehicle. It can travel along this area. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this area up here, so for right now I'm just going to go ahead and fill in this space with it, and uh, it's not going to make a lot of sense, so I'll probably go back and change that. I guess you could drive over a grate, right? drive into that plant. I don't know, it might stop you because uh, the the plant would, might just naturally stop. You know what, that doesn't make any sense right there. If you can't drive over this, this barrier, that one doesn't make any sense. All right, this is going to be a work in progress. We're gonna update this as, as time goes by. You know what, let's just shrink that down a bit so that we can grab all of it. Oh gosh. I did not do that well at all. Okay, here we go. This way we can test out the region restriction, just make sure that it's working. I, I did test it before, I'll just test it on this map too, make sure that we're okay on it. Um, and that's good, all the roads are now covered in the region restriction and we've got the boat. Um, and we are gonna have to start a new 
All right, here, I'll, I'll go ahead and stop that music. We are going to have to start a new playthrough to make sure that the this vehicle spawns. So I'm going to do a new playthrough. And I will take this opportunity of doing a new playthrough to test Kieran's level. Because, like I said, the battle is broken, but I can't remember how. Actually, I'm not sure if we can get past that level. No, we can't. That's right. That's how it's broken. We can't get past the level. So I'm actually not going to go into Kieran's level yet. Oh, I set the starting position here. Just so that we can fly a blimp around Call of Duty. Oh, and I can't land there. Okay, so no taking the blimp into the cafe. Wait, where did it go? How did it go all the way up there? Weird. Anyway, sorry, that's totally beside the point. Let's, um, if we're just starting them off, then I can actually just start the player off right here. So set starting position player and... We won't need to go through any of the intro sequences. We just hit new game and it should spawn everything. Great, so everything looks normal and this is our this is our normal walking speed. Actually the normal walking speed is this, but I always have it set to have the player walk really, really fast. So basically the player is running. And then if we hop into the car, oh, then we're going a lot faster. So that's that's going to be good. That's going to help us get around Call of Cthulhu. And then we can hop out here, go into the university, come back out, hop into the car. And yeah, it looks like the region restrictions are working great. So we're... Oh, and of course we can go on water because this is actually a boat, technically. So there you go. Um... But other than that, all of the restrictions are looking great. Now I am curious about this. Yeah, I can drive right over that plant. And that doesn't make sense, but I can, I can make it so that that part is restricted as well. Great. Oh, and we can go to the cafe again, and that's fine. Let's see if we can get back. Okay. And I, I don't have the, the regions in here defined, but I'm just holding control to do it, so it's working fine. Oh, I'm in there. It's just not... Oh, dang it. So there's a slight bug with the canceling out of the trigger sequence, and sometimes that happens where the screen just goes white and it doesn't work. But it looks like this is working fine, so uh, I actually feel a lot better about this particular um, layout of, of Arkham. I like this better than what I did have. And like I said, I do want to modify it and still add some changes, make it better. Um, but so far, I, I think we're working out okay. So this actually, I can just grab this event. So I, I just want to set up the events that I did have. So I'm going to head back to the trading city and I'm going to, actually, I'm just going to set it there. So these are the events that's, that are going to transfer us over to the road to the asylum right there. And this one's set up fine. So this one is going to need to change though. Gonna need to set that one up to go there because it's over. And third one, same thing. Gonna have to make that go to the third one. Beautiful. And let's get the music back. There we go. Thane theme, 80s style. Nice. Okay. Uh, so those are gonna go to the right place now. Did I have any other events going outside? No. Because I don't have any other places going outside. Oh, this though. I need. I need this. Okay, so I'm going to copy that. This is the event that changes the 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 mood. It uh, it's what tints the screen and gives it that that uh, nice uh, nice atmosphere. But again, the music is going to give it some really good atmosphere when I get the right piece of music for it. That'll be really good. Okay, so those are going to the right place. Now the road to asylum needs to go to the right place. It's right now not going to the right place anymore because I changed where I want it to go. Um, I should change the name of the map to, instead of Trading City, I should call it what it is. I should call it Arkham. 
I need to look up the, the licensing on that. I'm not sure if I can actually legally use the name Arkham, but I, I mean, Batman did. I don't know. That was based off of Call of Cthulhu, so it might be fine, but I, I'm actually not sure, so I'm just going to have to look up the legality of that. And you know, for, for legal issues, it, it's actually very hazy at the best of times, so I, I may only be able to get a general idea and, and maybe nothing more. And it might not work, and if it doesn't work, we will we'll just name it something different. But for right now, Arkham, I think that's how you spell it, so we're just going to do um, Arkham just like that. Maybe Arkham City? City of Arkham? Right. We'll do City of Arkham. There we go. Um, and that's just for us. Actually, no, no, let's go ahead and make that the display name. So this this input right here, the display name, that's actually what shows up. So I've got that little like transition that shows the map name, and that's where you set that. So I can, you know, call this anything, and that'll display up in, in the thing. The, this name is just the name of it over here. That's just for my benefit, so that as a developer I can see the name and I can be like, oh, that's what I was using that map for. All right, um, good, it is coming along. All right, okay, let's, let's hop into it one more time. Let's just make sure that these events are actually working. Um, let's see, what is this? Nope, oh, okay. So I just wanna make sure that the events are working these transfer events. And they should be working in the covered wagon, which is eventually going to become a car when I can actually get a 1920s vehicle graphic. I might just have to create one, which is okay. I mean, I can, but it's going to take some time and it's not going to look great. I've created uh, some of the graphics in the game. And I'm not, I'm not a digital artist, uh, really. I, I, I do enjoy making graphics and working on digital art. Oh, we are restricted, so this, this is actually not hard. So I, I do enjoy doing the art for these things, but I'm not super practiced in it, so. So I could make it, but it's not gonna be good. Excellent. Okay, now I'm gonna wait until this City of Arkham goes away because it was saying City of Arkham still here. Okay, so nothing else came up, that's good. Oh, hey, there we are, perfect, okay. So that's, that's really good. So I need to see if I can, or, or if I want. Okay, so so I think what I'm going to do is set the region for this to travel along this road, but then I'm going to make it so I can't travel along this path here. So you have to actually walk along that path. And I'll, I'll put a little sign here to say, you know, our Arkham City Sanatorium, I think is what they said. I have to go back and, and take another look at that. I, I listened to it again, and... I think it was Sanatorium, is what they called it. That was the official name of it in the podcast, so. Anyway, um, oh yeah, yeah, so this trading city, we don't need that anymore. Actually, wait, no. I will keep it around, just for reference, in case I need it, but I don't think I am going to need it. All of that, that's, um, yeah, the, the pier, I think I'm just going to get rid of completely. I just don't want that there. Um, in fact, maybe... Maybe let's just do that now, so I don't forget, so I'm just going to like, um, there we go. So I'm just going to do something like that, and you know what, I'm, I'm just going to fill this whole thing in with walking path, and it's not going to look good, not going to make any sense, but it's going to help me remember, that's what I wanted to do with it. Something like that, um, but not even actually like that, so I'm going to... I'm going to maybe keep some of these walls here and maybe add some more, but mostly I just want this to be kind of a separate area. That, that would be kind of cool though, a, a step down into just sort of a separate part of the city that's enclosed by walls. That seems kind of scary. I, I mean, this is sort of a horror town, so maybe. Um, that's beside the point. Okay, moving on. Uh, this little building over here is kind of weird, it doesn't make any sense being here so I'm just gonna get rid of that too um, and 
That might not be great either. I might add some other stuff there too, but for now I think this is fine. Um, let me just double check my regions. Yeah, that's on all of the streets. Fantastic. Now, uh, the other thing we need to do is row to asylum. We need to set the regions to number two. And that's all of this and all of that. Okay. And uh, that'll be just fine. We'll need to figure out what to do with all of this space here. I'll need to come up with some idea. Uh, but I don't want to make that a drivable region with the car. I do want to add a graphic there, though. I want to add a sign. I think I'll just have it be an old wooden sign. Maybe? Let's see. What, what about this sign? Hmm. Maybe. That, that might be a good sign for it. A little, little bit... Mm, a little bit more modern without being too crazy and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add an event here and it's just gonna tell you what this place is so I'm gonna have it be same as characters and the action button triggers a text message that says Arkham City Sanatorium okay um, I think that's all I'm gonna be. Oh, so so I'm gonna have this be dim, and yeah, I'll go ahead and keep it at the bottom. All right, let's go ahead and just uh, test this one more time, just make sure that we're. I mean, everything looked like it was working fine, except that we couldn't drive on that road. So I just want to double check, make sure we can drive on the road, read the sign, and get where we need to go. Just test out the gameplay just a little bit right now. Great. Oh, this is really nice driving. I mean, it's it's a lot faster. This is cool. Oh, dang it. Ah, dang. Okay, I, I did not mean to do that. Um, hopefully this doesn't give me a white screen. I get it. Nope, it did. Well, that's too bad. Okay. Maybe I should put that on a place. You know what? I, I'm going to change where that is so that it's not in a place that we can drive over it because that is just not working. We will put it, uh, yeah, let's just put it right there. Boom. We cannot get to it with the car anymore. All right. My nose keeps itching, sneezing earlier. I'm not getting sick. I don't, I don't feel like I'm getting sick. I just have an itchy nose and sneezing. I'm trying to think about the, the graphic when I do make it. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, when I create the graphic for the car, I need to make sure it's certain. Way. Arkham City Sanatorium, great. Uh, maybe I want to center that. I don't know. I'll, I'll think about that too. So here's here's the thing though. The the car right now I'm I'm just noticing that the car is just a little bit wonky because if you think about if you think about the size of the character I mean look at this the the character is about the size of the vehicle and that's that's really weird these are meant to be you know overworld vehicles so you like you know you're you're here you go and you hop into a boat in the overworld and you can travel places um, it's not necessarily meant to, to be this so that might be that might be a little wonky but it, I mean, it's a video game, so it's it's full of representations. What's that going to do? I'm right on top of the vehicle. Ha, huh, that's funny. So I'm actually curious what would happen if I hit the button. Oh, nothing. I have to walk off of it. Huh. It's actually kind of fascinating. So maybe maybe these ones I should have you just standing on the... On the uh, stone pathway so that you don't actually end up like on top of the car where you can't actually do anything with it. Okay, so maybe I'll do that. Because that just goes straight out. Oh, that's funny. So I guess whichever direction you were moving in, that's the direction that you hop out of the car. Okay, that's good to know. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do that in the possible asylum, which is actually the asylum now. 
I'm going to change that um, into Arkham City Asylum, but it's not it's not the asylum in the podcast. It is Sanatorium. Great. Fantastic. Okay, Arkham City Sanatorium. And Road to Asylum, I'm just going to keep the way it is. But these ones, I'm going to change their position just slightly where they transfer the player so that it's right there. Um, and hopefully that'll be okay. See, mostly I want to keep these things consistent. I want you to transfer past the, the point where you can transfer back to the previous map so that if you go and you transfer to a map and you just immediately change your mind, you're like, oh, wait, I forgot something, then you can just hold down. You can immediately go back without having to step off of the event and then back on it. But in the case of this particular part, I think I'm going to do it the other way where you're standing on it. I mean, I could just adjust the map and just lower the whole thing down. Maybe I'll do that instead. Yeah, never mind. Maybe I'll do that. Because, because why? Uh, because I want to keep things consistent. Okay. Um, so let's uh, let's go to the road to the asylum. Let's actually just kind of drop the whole thing down, uh, which means we are going to have to change. Oops, there we go. We're going to have to change those anyway but there we go if we just drop it down like that then that's going to to give us the ability to do what i was just talking about so this is going to transfer you up to the part and um i'm gonna to have to actually I, I don't think i'm going to need to change um where where those other ones are dropping you after all let me test and we will see. Okay, so the the car won't be able to go up there. You'll be able to transfer through over there. And then when you come back, you'll be here. So yeah, I think we're good. And then we can move on and check out the Corona of Matterwick event. And maybe give that, that part of the podcast a listen. Okay, so good. That's all working. That's great. And if I go out here, then, then we're just there. If you go up there, that's fine, and you go back, nice. So we're never going to be on top of the car. Cool. Okay. I like that. That, that works out. Um, let me just adjust the grass just a little bit because it's it's just a little off. Okay. What is happening? Oh, oh, it's because I'm on the wrong thing. There we go. Uh, so I need that guy. I just want to uh, give it a, a little bit of variety. There we go. Just uh, make it more interesting. I'm going to make this whole area more interesting, but for right now, it's working fine, and we can get around. The road restrictions are working great. So let's go and uh, let's call that done. I'm going to go ahead and save my changes. I should have done that a long time ago. Save often. And uh, let's just take one more look at the city of Arkham. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about that for now. I like how that is. And this week, um, I think I might start planning out more of Arkham. Make sure that Arkham City is looking right. That I have, um, you know, good good idea of what I want to do with it. Uh, and maybe I won't get to that this week either. But I I will. Uh, make a mental note to kind of plan on that a little bit. Okay, so let's go back to the D&D universe, and we're going to hop over to something else. It's good to kind of break up what we do to keep things a little more interesting, because I just spent a full hour stumbling my way through um, working on a map, so now it's kind of nice to do events. Now I get to spend a half an hour stumbling through events, <laughs> right? Okay, so we're going to take this event tool and take a look at what we have so oh yeah so um that's right i made myself a note and that's the main thing i want to do is get the crone of manderwick um artwork into this so that we can have a proper uh, dialogue with the crone of manderwick so 
let's see what we have. Crone of Manderwick right now is, uh, nope. So all she does is say hello. And this is the Crone of Manderwick. Uh, that's just the sprite that I have for her. So what we need to do is get, um, in the D&D universe, yes, we've got the Crone of Manderwick, which has been cleaned up. Now I need to remember where to add this. Um, got crone crone clean i think that's the right one but i might have to open it up in inkscape and make a better version of it maybe not okay let's actually go over oh so this is this is the old um project so actually here let's Let's go into the new one, go into images, and, oh, we need music. Where is that music? There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go to, oh, is it characters? No, it's not characters. It's in images, um, pictures, I think. Yes, this is right. Okay, so, so here are the image busts. Um, so these are all just PNGs. Here's Vula. Bula 1 and Bula 2. Oh, cool. Interesting. All right, so I've got a TST template, um, and that's not what I'm looking for. What I want is, is that... Oh, Winterest. This was my um, Winterest concept art. That's right. I need to get something for that for Call of Cthulhu. Um, bust template. Now, I wonder if that's actually the thing. So I'm going to try opening this up in GIMP and see if... See if that has anything to do with it. Here's some of the the Exile of Fate artwork. You can see that down there. The Exile of Fate. It's fun ship. Did you? I I actually. Let me show you this. See if you can see it. That is the Exile of Fate, 3D printed. So I designed it. Um, I I designed the ship. I built out the model in Tinkercad. And after I built it out, I was like, hey, I can 3D print this thing. So I did. I 3D printed that. So there you go. That's the... It's it's kind of washed out because it's it's white, so it's hard to see any of the detail. But it even has escape pods that, that uh, pop off of the side there. So the escape pods can launch out of that. But anyway, I figured after designing that ship, I had to 3D print it because why not, right? So this is not what I'm looking for. This is not the right template. Um, so I'm going to just take one of these other ones and pattern pattern the uh, what am I thinking? Pattern the Crone of Manderwick after that one. Okay. So, but I want to make sure that I have the the kind of vectorized-ish version of them. Now this isn't actually going to, uh, well, maybe. Okay, so here's the chrome. And um, I just want to make sure that I have the right version I'm looking for. Yeah, 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 I think this is it. Okay, so I need to take this one and open it up in GIMP. Uh, oh my gosh, how do I do that? Let's see, open with, there you are, okay. Man, that was way down there. All right, there's the, Crone. So now we just need one of these other ones to pattern it after. And what does the crone look like? It's kind of <laughs> it's gonna be hard to tell. All right, I'm I'm just gonna open up um, Isaac here. Open with him. All right, so the crone. I just need to uh, all of that copy and paste it on top of Isaac there. Then I'm going to need to scale it. Oh, and I can't remember the shortcuts, so I'm just going to have to, um, wow, I'm just going to have to guess, uh, sure, scale that. This is not looking quite right. I, um, you know what, the scaling doesn't always work the way I think it will. Um, so let's actually scale tool. There, there's like a, a an option that you can set 
in scaling. Wait, readjust? I don't know what that means. There's actually an option. There are a few different ways you can scale in GIMP, and one preserves the the um, oh, what's it called? The not the the ratio, but it, it preserves it so that the the lines are cleaner. This is not doing that though. So let's see what we can do. And this is missing some uh, that should be white. Okay, and I can't remember how I do that. You, you can scale it without losing the quality or scale it and lose the quality and, and I can't recall how to do that. Maybe maybe if I anchor it, maybe it'll be a little bit better. Okay, so I'm gonna scale. Oh, oh, interpolation cubic. Oh, I think I want it to be none. <laughs> maybe, I'll try that and see what happens. What is going on? Nope, that is not what I'm looking for. Um, oh, it's because I did that wrong. Okay, what I need to do is create this as a new layer. There we go. And then uh, interpolation linear, let's try that. Let's try linear interpolation. Oh gosh, what are we doing? See, it's still not looking quite right. It's looking better. Thing is, we don't need to scale her that much. Um, Maybe really just like that, and then move it over um, here. I do want I do want the ball to be showing clearly though. Let's just nudge it just a little bit, just so that it's right on the edge there. And just make sure that the size looks about right. Yeah, the image still isn't looking clear. It's not looking quite right. Oh, and see, I can't remember. I, and she's short, so I'm gonna drop her down even, even more below Isaac. Even though Isaac is short in, in well, no, not in. Oh yeah, in D and D, he's short. Um, yeah, it just doesn't look quite right. It's not gonna look right in the game. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back here, and I'm gonna try scaling it with a different interpolation again. So let's try cubic. I think we tried that before. Let's see what that looks like. Scale. I'm, I'm like way overdoing it, but it's, it's just because I want to make sure that we get it right. See, that's not looking right either. Okay, so I might just have to go back and, and do this in Illustrator. Just make it, um, make the, the image larger. Yeah, I already tried that, and that's not working. Okay, all right, never mind. For now, maybe we can be okay with what it is. Round center. What if I do a scale layer? But I don't know exactly how big we want it, so let's let's actually scale it here. We want it. Uh, 373 by 454. 373, 454. Reset. 373, 454. Um, layer. Scale layer. 373 by 454. And uh, we'll try cubic scale. Yeah, see, still not working. Let's try that again, only with another interpolation. So I'm just wondering if doing it with the with the layer instead of just scaling the image itself might be better. What was that? 373? Okay, it's just not gonna work and that's fine. We can address this another time. Okay, let's go ahead and get that there. For now though, let's just get this in the game and see what we've got. So we're gonna take that away. Oh, I do need a shadow though because I've got shadows on these guys. For their dialogue? I think so. Yeah, because this guy is... Yep, yeah, I've got shadows on all of them. And, of course, I can't remember the settings I used for the drop shadows, so I'm just going to do my best. So, let's do the drop shadow... Oh, but then... The shadow's gonna get cut off over here. That might be okay. Okay, so uh, anyway, we're going to do light shadow. We're gonna just do a drop shadow 
right over there. That's not quite right. I think maybe it was like seven. Seven by seven. Uh, maybe, but I did want this to increase. There we go. Darker shadow. That actually looks about right. Let's let's go just straight up one. Okay, let's do that. Um, good enough. Let's see if that works. So I'm going to export this as, instead of Isaac 7, I'm going to export this as, oh, I can't remember what it was, uh, Crone of Manderwick. can't remember if there were like underlines and whatnot. Um, you know what, it, it's actually going to tell us if we turn the busts back on. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of this so the bust is true, and I'm actually going to play through this just to make sure that we are, um, just, just so that we know exactly what uh, we're supposed to call the file. I'll show you. It'll make sense in a minute. Um, I think this was the one. Fantastic work. Yep, here we go. Okay, so here's the crone. She, her sprite looks too young, but that's fine. Okay, so we're looking for... So that percent 20 is a space. We're just looking for crone space. I want to write this down. Uh, crone space of with a lowercase o. Wow, okay, this is kind of fun. So C-R-O-N-E. Um, and then... Uh, Manderwick is capitalized. Manderwick underscore one dot png. Okay, so now we know what we're supposed to call this file, and we will call it that. So do crone of Manderwick underscore one okay now why why is that name the way it is I wonder where it's picking up that name I wonder if it's after the event it is oh so um, those spaces might actually get in the way of this so I'm going to get rid of those spaces I'm gonna make them underlines um, and all lowercase so all lowercase no spaces that way, just in case that does mess it up, just because there are spaces in there, sometimes it messes things up uh, on a coding level. So I'm going to actually rename it that. And then I'm going to take this, copy that name, hit OK. And over here, I'm going to uh, drop that in just like that. And that should work. So I'm going to export this, export, and we'll see if that is going to work. Cool. I should be in the right place. Did that actually... I didn't see where that was going to go. You know, I'm going to save this again. Export as. Uh, tells me nowhere. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I, I think that went to the right place. Yeah. So it was based off of um, the Isaac graphic that I had. Nope, not new game. That's not what we're looking for. I'm going to go to uh, quit and to title. All right, go down to continue, file one. Cool. Okay, so let's see if this event is working correctly now. I think it makes sense for her to come down from that area. No, it's still looking for it named that way. Hmm. That's kind of funny. Oh well. Uh, let's go ahead and name it that way. Oh, it's it's probably because of the face graphic. Anyway, let's see if this works. So I'm going to go ahead and um, export as crone of manderwick underscore one 
Okay, I'll just export it like this and see if that makes a difference. Now, if that doesn't work because of the spaces, then I'll have to go through and change the face graphic and see if that makes a difference. See if it still works, even if I change the name of the face graphic. Okay. Let's just see what happens. I'm actually not sure if the text box... Oh, well, there we go. It did work. Great. Now, the shadow does look a, a little weird, and the lines are not crisp like... I would like them to be, yeah, yeah, it's not perfect, but it's, it's getting there, it's a little bit better. I'm saying something, I want to make sure that that uh, updates to be uh, the crone of Mandarin Quest. But that's good, I think this is a good um, piece of progress for the crone of Mandarin. Uh, let's see. Now why is why is this working? The other one is not. Corona Manderwick. Um, I think it's just because I don't have this on there. Okay, I, I'm just looking at this part of it. Um, Oh yeah, and it's bust false, I need bust to be true, and then when she says something, it's going to actually show um, her bust. Okay, cool. So we're going to save that. Let's get some music going again. Um, let's see, what song is that? Corruption of the Unicorn, Mutants and Mast Lines. Cool. Okay, so we've got that. Uh, what else did I want to do? I, I made two notes for myself at some point, probably last week. But uh, one one note was to get the Chrono Matterwick art in-game. I'm going to check that off, get vehicle, region restriction plugin, and I did that. Now I am going to make myself another note here, though, that says uh, update the Chrono Matterwick graphic. Chrono graphic. Because it's not, the, the lines aren't crisp, and I can't remember exactly how I did that. Um, and, and resize them just so. Maybe I did that in Illustrator because I have the vector art. Um, I can't remember how that was done. So I'm going to, actually this week, that's what I'm going to work on. I'm going to work on getting that particular graphic looking right. So, All right, with the, the last few minutes that we have, I want to go back and take a look at Kieran's level so that we can get that working, get it so that we can actually at least pass that level and get back and get into the main game. So we need to figure out why it's not working. Um, so let's go ahead and, and do a, a quick run through and we'll see exactly at what point it fails. And then we can address that issue. I think I, I kind of have an idea. It's, it has to do with the, the battling. Nope, that's not. Oh, um, but first I actually need to get the, the character starting here again. So I'm going to put the player starting position here. This is where we choose the character and when we're starting there, in order for it to not look super weird, I want to start transparent. So the player starts transparent in this character choice and that'll get us to the Kieran level. Perfect. I'm going to hit new game and choose Kieran. Great, so we're here, wahaha. Use the arrow keys to move, We've got our little tutorial. Tutorial. Okay, so that's working fine. Okay. So, we're gonna do this bad, oh yeah, this is like a weird thing, so there's definitely something wrong with this. Um, and we're going to win very, very easily, especially if you do Spirit Hands. Was it quite as intense? Thousand Spears, that's the one. <laughs> that's overkill. Nice. You know, overkill is really fun sometimes. Distraction, eh? So yeah, what... Um, what was supposed to happen is the children were supposed to disappear, and he says, Distraction A, I will still destroy you. 
uh, which is all correct, but the children are supposed to disappear and he's supposed to stop walking toward them. Um, those are the things that are supposed to happen. So let's just see what happens if we fight him again. If he says distraction A, then, then it's just caught in a loop. It's not, it's not triggering what's supposed to trigger to make it... Yeah, so distraction A. Um, it's just not triggering the thing to break out of that particular loop. We just need to figure out why. So I think it's going to be under enemies, and what we have is... Wow, wait, where is it? So what on earth? Oh, okay, that's that's actually really weird. I'm not sure what that has set up to be the enemy. Um, doesn't look like I have him set up as an enemy. Uh, exclamation, do 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 do, uh, appetizers. Just gonna look where the battle begins. Oh wait, no, okay, so the battle doesn't begin yet. He starts walking. Battle processing Wraith. Um, so this is actually working, but it's not moving on. If win, if lose. Oh, weird. Okay, so, so the troop is Wraith. See, and I thought that I had tried this before, and when I tested it before, it worked fine. And then this battle processing is the other Wraith. This is Wraith number 8. But I don't think we have an actual enemy for it. Hmm. Do, 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 do. Okay, well, let's take a look. So, in the system, we're going to take a look at the enemies again. Well, there's there's nothing. There's just nothing there. Uh, cafe Nowhere. So, these are all of them. The only one we have set up is Duger. So, the troops, we've got Wraith, which has just nothing. There's nothing in there. But there there used to be something, I think. So, I'm going to clear that out because there's, there's nothing there. Um which is kind of funny. So I need to create the Wraith enemy. So let's go ahead and take uh, the Antivirus or the Duger. Let's see which one's stronger. The Duger is stronger. So I'm going to copy that and make it the Wraith character. Um, Wraith. And, and I'm going to change all of this. I'm going to change everything. I, I just want to have something right now to look at. So um, I'm going to go ahead and drop this in as the the wraith and what did I use for this oh I had something set up for it completely um, in the old project okay I'm gonna go back to the old project and take a quick look at a few things first thing I'm gonna look at is the enemies and I'm gonna take a look at the wraith real quick make sure I'm not missing anything uh, where is it there it is all right great uh, so I'm totally missing something um, missing all of this stuff so this is actually in the note tag of the enemies section um, for the wraith. So I'm going to hit that right there. Great. Okay. So that should actually bring in the right um, graphic. So it's not going to be this guy. I'm just going to be called wraith. Now the troops, we've got stuff down here working on it, which is fine. The other thing that I really wanted to see is uh, what those events look like when you uh, win or lose the battle. So right in here, we've got the Wraith, and if win, if lose, has nothing. There is nothing in them. Um, uh, the win or lose is over here in this one, which I think is how it's set up here. Um, oh, I'm going to get so confused. I'm going to put that back there. Great. Okay. Um, this is the current one. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take a look at this, and uh, win or lose is nothing, but win or lose is here. All right, so let's see if adding this enemy to the troop list actually makes a difference. So um, in the troops, I'm going to take this and add the wraith. I'm going to move it back over here. Maybe, maybe not so far. I don't. 
I have no idea. Um, up here halfway. Oh, well that's kind of cool. Now I don't want it to appear halfway. How do I do that? Okay, I'm going to clear it and add that again. I'm just going to add it straight straight up like that, and this one I'm going to add the race to that one too. And uh, the only reason why I have two different troops is that this one behaves differently, because this, this one, once the um, actor's hit point, uh, the actor... Yeah, so um, once the character's hit points go below 50%, then the wraith is like, wait, where did the children go? So I do want this this wraith to be hard hitting, but not too hard hitting. So let's take a look at the wraith and look at the attack. Now that attack, I think I want to go up a bit. Let's actually, oh, 30, let's, let's go all out. Let's just see what happens. I don't want it to be over too quickly though. I don't want the, the, the um, wraith to just do one hit and, and destroy the character. I don't want that to happen, but I don't want the character to be able to do that Thousand Spears thing and just take down the Wraith immediately either, so I am going to fix that, but right now we just want to get to a point where we can have it work. The Wraith is supposed to be a, a battle, it's supposed to be so difficult that you're not going to be able to defeat the Wraith in one go, so you're not going to be able to actually beat the Wraith before your hit points go below 50%. At least that's the idea. Um, but yes, so I, I need to set up the battle so that that is the case. All right, so the children are up there playing, and now they're getting scared. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to battle, and there's the Wraith, fantastic. I'm just going to do a straight attack. Whoa, that's, yeah, that's not good. And now the Wraith is, yeah, so I'm just going to guard. Good, good, okay. So that that is a good amount of hit points. I, um, or, or a good attack for the race. It's 30. Maybe I should up it even more. Um, but the race I'm going to make more difficult to actually hit. I'm going to give it more defense too. Because we are taking this guy down way too much. He's not taking us down here. Near quickly. Now, Guard actually, um, from what I understand of this battle system, doesn't necessarily protect you anymore. It just changes the order for, for your next turn. It, it puts you in front, um, it, it, it puts you up at the beginning of the next round if you have a party of, of characters. I don't think it. Well, no, it, it, it looks like it is increasing the defense. So there you go. I, I can tell because it's putting up this, this little um, increase up here. You'll see it. So, like, it's like one. so anyway, maybe if I use an item, no, an switch. You can't switch your item. There's nobody switching. So I'll just guard. I'll just keep guarding until we are at low enough hit points. What is 637 divided by half? That's 300 and so for a while we're getting closer. Let's get 350. Yes, there we are. Wait, where did the children go? Yeah, I need him to hit harder. Distraction A, no matter, I will still destroy you. Great. Okay, and that's what triggered the, the switch. So I think um, since that switch was never getting set, that's what happened. Let's kick that ball around. Okay, so uh, fighting him again should, yeah, now we finish it once for all. This goes into the final battle, and you can actually, um, if you do get to the point where you can defeat him, then he says no, he goes down. What just happened? That attack went twice. That's, that wasn't supposed to happen quite that way. Arg, this is not the end. Now, I really want to update this particular part because this is lame and, and dumb because this guy goes away and then Kira's just like, yeah, too badly damaged. It looks like this is the end for me and then she just falls over. And, and that, that's actually kind of ridiculous. I want something like more epic. You know, he takes one final swipe at her while he goes and, and she just falls over ah, or something. I don't know. Anyway, I need to think of a better way to do that. 
but the battle is actually working. It's it's um, playable, which is good. Now I do want to balance that out a little bit more really quick. So um, I'm actually just going to double the attack. Hopefully that's not too much, but let's let's give this one another shot. Uh, I just don't I, I don't want the battle to take a long time, and I want the wraith to hit really hard, but I don't want I don't want the wraith to one shot kill the character either. So let's just see what we have. Oh, ha ha! I'm just gonna pick this up because why not? Okay, great. So we're gonna go and face off with the wraith for the first time. I hope I hope the players realize, oh hey, I need to go and do something. I hope they feel like, oh, I've got to stop him before he gets to the kids. Um, otherwise, he, he actually um, is kind of funny. He does eat the kids. Um, uh, you know what? Here, I'll, I'll show you. Look. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> and so that was a crazy animation, though. That was not what's supposed to happen. I can't remember what the animation was before, but I do need to swap that one out. Anyway. Oh, now we finish it, so this is the this is the final battle then. Well, let's just go through and see what happens on this one. It does not look like the Wraith is hitting very much harder at all. We're hitting pretty hard. Oh, that was a hard hit. Nice. Let's just see what happens. So he's, he is getting some harder hits in. I'm just gonna go ahead and lose this battle. Just to see what okay, great. Um, so uh, that animation was not correct. The nom 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 animation. Uh, I kind of want to take care of that really quick. So that, um, so that I don't forget about it. So I think one of these events actually runs his movements and that particular part of it. We're almost done. I know we're at 10.32. We are just about there. Oh, there it is. Nom, nom, nom. Okay, so it's in this, this event right there, and... Kid one and two explosions. Not supposed to be. Oh wait, what are we doing? Not supposed to be explosion. Okay, let's find out exactly what it's supposed to be. So, this one over here, um, dark. So, 26 dark, 60 FPS. So let's do um, the dark one. There we go. 26 dark, 60 FPS. Wow, I just found this and now I've lost it again. There it is. Great. Okay, good. Um, cool. Okay, so now the animation should be correct. And uh, we battled with the Wraith, and he still wasn't super duper strong, but he was stronger. Let's go ahead and up that to 70, just, just to make it really hard to be the guy. But that's actually where I'm going to leave it for right now. So let's go ahead and um, turn on some party music. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, that does it for today's stream, but please join me next week, and I'll be working on this again, and uh, we'll get through a lot of stuff. I think next week I might focus a bit more on the, um, on the battle system and on the attacks and on the enemies and start setting up some of the, the uh, other battles within the D&D universe because there's still some battles that we're missing. Uh, specifically, I do want to put in the, the Drider and that's going to be kind of cool. I started making a graphic for that earlier, but I can't find out where that is. So I'm going to keep looking for that. And if I can't find it, I'll just make a new one um, the same way that I started making it before. But I do have a good uh, graphic for the the uh, walking walking around rider i just need to create a battler graphic but anyway that's a long way of saying i'm going to work on the battle system next week
probably. That's that's my my plan for now. So I will see you then, and thanks again for watching. Catch you later.